No. <laughs> oh, hello there. I didn't hear you come in. I threw this down for some reason. I'm supposed to explain things to you. I remembered now. I was reading Star Wars, Darth Vader, Volume 1, Vader. It is a, it is a very good book based off a filmic classic. As we all know, I'm an expert of all media of all forms, including the Victrophone. With, uh, written by Karen Gillen, who is not her name at all, or his name. Yes, however, I highly suggest you pick up this book. It is a, a, a one. As we all know, though, there are not all mainstream comics. Back in the olden days, they used to publish weird and bizarre comics, such as Superman or whatever. But contained within those pages was not the works in which we know of today, where everything is normal and everything is grounded in some form of reality. Back in the olden days, they used to have strange and bizarre things happen to them. I shall now show you one of those things. Javs! Bring me a bazaar! Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? <laughs> Um, um, okay, <laughs> introducing the green team, <laughs> boy millionaires, <laughs> some millionaires sit in the sun waiting for something to happen, but not the green team, we offer millions of dollars for each adventure, and we always get our money's worth, that's what it says on the cover, I don't even know if we'll be able to find a scan of this. <laughs> <laughs> it says from the line of DC Superstars, first special issue, number two. Um, is this real? Uh, so first up, we open with a classic Hostess Twinkie ad. This is the first special, first special issue, here in the credits page, it says first special issue, volume one, number two. Is the book called first special issue? So, welcome to the green room. You're just in time to sit with us while we make the decision on which adventure projects we finance. And then it shows this kid and this guy and a monster in a crate? Okay, so I think he's in charge. So there's an African-American child. He's sad because he can't join the Millionaire's Club because he doesn't have a million dollars. It's not a problem for me. I have millions and millions of dollars just sitting around for seemingly no real reason. But he buzzes the Millionaire's Club. He joins... So he doesn't have money, but he was able to join that there was a bill hang on. But wait. So there's a billboard advertising the green team. It's right there. It says you must have one million dollars. That is a critical part of the of the club joining system. Why are they advertising it on the street? If the minimum requirement is one million dollars, not everyone on the street has a million dollars. Okay, so he goes to the bank, or it's just a money, a, a building with money signs on it. And that is clearly the headquarters of the Millionaire's Club. Okay, we're on page two. We're five minutes in. <laughs> so he rings the doorbell. He's just let in the door. The smoking cigars and drinking fine brandies. And he's just let in the door for seemingly no reason. He just wanders on in. He's like, can I join the club? And they're like, the minimum requirement's $1 million. But you're an industrious young lad. And you're just like, sure. You can join the club. The minimum requirement is literally a $1 million. That's the minimum requirement. But you can join. You. Because we have apparently have a black kid quota that we aren't fulfilling. So this is we need you. You're very important. Or else we can get sued for like diversity reasons. Jesus Christ. We're on page three. 
Page four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again. Billboard for the team. Billboard on the street. Kid is in limo. He is the Commodore shipping tycoon. This kid is 12 or t is 10 to 12. He can't possibly, possibly be that old. He's from Rock Munch, Oregon, which has a population of two. So he's... Rock Munch, Oregon is a town that has never been... So there's a gold rush and it was a boom town and now there's nothing left of it. It seems to be the, what this caption is trying to say. If I had to just briefly guess it. Then there's some advertisements. You, okay, so there's some cowboys sitting in the real estate office. Because as we all know, real estate offices are stocked with cowboys. That is, that is my experience with real estate offices. They are stocked with cowboys. Hang on. So he purchases a town. Holy shit! So he bought a whole town. A failed town in Oregon. He bought the whole town. Blew it up to make a shipping canal. Now, I'm no expert. But that seems illegal as fuck. <laughs> um, look, he blows it up to make a sh canal? A jet port. He bulldozed the town to make a, a personal airport. In Oregon. For seemingly no discernible reason. He just bought a town just to build a... Per that is just a blatant disregard of money to build a personal airport only for yourself in the middle of buttfuck Oregon. We move on to J.P. Houston, oil magnet. Yet another, another billboard, another one, advertising the green team. This old man is talking to his butler there. When... J.P. J.P. Houston, oil ma oil well, J.P. Houston oil. I'm very confused with everything that's happening. I'm on page seven. So he bought the whole. So basically, instead of calling him on the phone, it says this here. I flew my jet to this personal airport you just completed to join the green team. Oh my god. <laughs> You gotta be fucking shitting me with this. <laughs> Introducing Sissel Sunbeam, the star-making child director. What the fuck? I can't even keep the voice up. <laughs> um, I need to see how long this lasted. So he's, he's a genius. He's shooting, so he's shooting every single Shakespeare play as a movie. All of them. One, like, epic long. I don't know how the fuck many Shakespeare plays there are. There's like a billion. That's what it seems to say here. If you don't believe me, you can read it. That's what it seems like it's saying. But he never goes by the script. He's doing it to what? So he's filming every Shakespeare play, but he's not abiding to the script. Like you can't just be a director and not abide by the script at all. You, like, investors would not give you money to not abide by the script. Who is financing this kid? Is he financing himself? He only has a million dollars. That's not enough. Even in 1975. So he's mad that the actors aren't showing enough passion. Not enough action. Not enough drama. So he personally goes into the movie and starts personally choreographing a fight scene. We're on page nine. And then he just leaves. Middle of the take. He's just like, and I am spent. I need to leave. So they fly them in. They're all there. The, all, the, all the children are in the are in the room. You're following thus far. Nothing fucking batshit has happened in a few pages. Uh, okay. So this creepy dude right here, purple shirt, right, right there, is pitching them, is pitching them a real estate building idea in Antarctica. I think he's evil, but there's no way for me to particularly tell. He's pitching a city built out of potatoes. I'm not making this up. I wish I could. But I'm not. I'm not making this up. It says it right here. It says it right here. He's building it out of potatoes. Because hypothetically, if you built it in the Arctic, it would be fine and it's a perfect insulator. I've not tested this theory. And I'm no expert on the common folk potato. But I know for a fact, an absolute fact, that there's no way potato is a better insulator than wood. 
I'm no expert, but I'm almost certain that wood is significantly better at retaining heat than a potato would be. The whole premise being that if they died, they'd start eating the houses, but then the kid with the hat just kicks him out. Apparently, this was an intentionally dumb business decision idea. So they're talking for... he, Then the child, other child, the one that doesn't have the money shows up. So the kid put, f the, this kid, this kid right here, put $5 in the bank. Due to a computer rounding error at the bank, his $5 becomes $5 million. I know. So he goes to the stock exchange and he starts investing and he gets, he gets the million. It, not five million, five, half a million. That's still a shitload of money due to a rounding error. So he invested in the stock mach stock exchange and he gets the million. So he makes it in the, he's in the club now. He has the million dollars. He was already allowed in the club and now he's fully allowed in the club. I don't know what the shit's going on anymore. There's a construction crew. We're in medias resing this in the middle of the book. We're to cutting to something, and now for something completely different. So there's a building project where they're building like a superstructure. The Great American Pleasure, Ma Jesus. The Great American Pleasure Machine. But they're mad at it. They, they're mad. They were building, but they're mad at it. What the fuck? Okay, 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 okay. This panel, this panel right, right here, shows Batman right here, shows Batman, Superman, and presumably an uncolored Spider-Man informing the green team to burn it down. Burn down the Great American Pleasure Machine. So they, they run away, so they make it, that they don't destroy it. I just need to get to the end of, so they calm everyone down by like a cartoon throwing money out the window. And then the guy who built the great American pleasure machine gets thrown into the mental asylum. And that's the end of the book. Fucking burn this. <laughs> Good night.